Hello everyone, my name is Elite Trainer Kenway. Last week we discussed our review for the Pokemon Scarlet Violet DLC, and today we're looking to continue on that conversation by talking about opportunities Game Freak left on the table that, if implemented, could have improved the DLC dramatically. For clarification, this isn't a massive wish list of things like the national decks that should have been added. Instead, this is a look at some small, realistic changes that, if implemented, could have improved not only the Till Mask, but Scarlet Violet as a whole. So, let's talk about it. For starters, Let's talk about starter Pokemon. While we do get a Sinnoh starter egg from Jacques once we get to Kitakami, just imagine for a moment if we got to pick from three brand new Kitakami starters. While we don't know much about Kitakami, we are led to believe that it is considered to be its own region. And giving us three brand new starters in the middle of a generation in a DLC is a fantastic way to shake up the Pokemon formula and of course add replay value. Speaking of replay value, I personally played through the Teal Mask twice once to get Ogre Pond and the Loyal 3 for my Master Decks, and a second time to get Ogre Pond and the Loyal 3 for my Scarlet Violet DLC Living Decks. If they had implemented a way to change Ogre Pond's Sprite into the Fire, Water, or Stone form, I and every other collector out there would have played through the DLC at least four times to make sure we got one of each version of Ogre Pond in Pokemon Home. Speaking of the masks, a huge chunk of Ogre Pond's story has us, the player, tracking down the Loyal 3 to take Ogre Pond's masks back from them. What if, instead of finding their Titan forms, which is something we've already done in Scarlet and Violet, instead they actually fused with the masks that they stole? How cool would it have been if Okie Dokie, Monkey Dory, and Fazendipity fused with the masks that they stole and their poison type got temporarily replaced by Fire, Water, or Rock type? Generation 9 so far seems to be all about changing Pokemon's types or adding new types. So by allowing the Loyal 3 to fuse with the masks that they stole, that would have inspired Pokemon theorists like myself to question how powerful these masks really are. Instead, we were given masks that only affect Ogre Pond. Next, let's talk about the Timeless Woods. The Timeless Woods was hyped up as this heavily mysterious wooded area that may contain all sorts of cool stuff. What we got instead was a single story-driven encounter with Blood Moon or Saluna and a bunch of ghost Pokemon. While I do think that Blood Moon Earth Saluna is really cool, and I said as much in my last video, I can't help but think the Timeless Woods was a major missed opportunity. Instead of Blood Moon Earth Saluna and ghost Pokemon, the Timeless Woods instead could have been filled with Blood Moon Earth Saluna and Hisuian Pokemon, or Blood Moon Earth Saluna and Fossil Pokemon. We already have Hisuian Basculin, Basculegion, Zora, Zoroark, Growlithe, and Arcanine in Paldea, so why not just go ahead and put the rest of the Hisuian Pokemon in the Timeless Woods? Or instead use the Timeless Woods as an entry point for fossil Pokemon to come into Paldea like the Crown Tundra was for Galar last generation. Seriously, why even call it the Timeless Woods if it's going to contain exactly one old Pokemon and the rest be modern ghosts? Before we move on to our last point, I want to say that it absolutely blows my mind that it took nearly 20 years for us to go back to a new area of Japan, and we get exactly zero characters from Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, or Sinnoh that show up in Kitakami. For those of you who don't know, the land of Kitakami is seemingly based off the Tohoku region of Japan, which would put it between Johto and Sinnoh on the Pokemon World map. If this is in fact where Kitakami is located, then we are smack dab in the middle of Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, and Sinnoh when we're in Kitakami. And yet, no one shows up from any of those regions. There's no mention of Professor Oak, there's no mention of Red, there's no mention of Bill, of Cynthia, of Cyrus, of Giovanni, or even of Steven Stone. There are incredibly important trainers all around the land of Kitakami, and yet, we have nothing. Having someone from those first four regions show up in Kitakami, or at the very least be mentioned, would have been a great addition to the DLC. I mean, why even go back to Japan at all if you're not going to mention the other regions around it that, for most players, is the core of the Pokemon franchise? It honestly makes me wonder how they're going to handle Drayton of the Blueberry Academy Elite Four, who is a very clear descendant of Drayton in the Unova region. So hopefully, when the Indigo Disc drops, we'll get some sort of revelation as to where the events of Scarlet and Violet fall on the overall Pokemon timeline. But having someone from Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, or Sinnoh show up in Kitakami would have been amazing. And finally, there's one more feature that, in my opinion, if it were implemented in the Till Mask, would have improved not only the DLC, but the overall game tremendously. For those of you who don't know, there are certain moves like Surf and Earthquake that, when executed, can damage everything on the battlefield. In previous generations, you can encounter hordes of Pokemon and you can wipe them all out with a single move. Generation 9 introduced a feature called the Let's Go feature, which is a sort of an auto-battling system 
whereby your Pokemon goes out on its own and battles for you, which is great for resource collecting or shiny hunting. Just in case you don't already know where I'm going with this, let me explain. The Till Mask should have added a feature that combines the mass knockout of Earthquake and Surf with the Let's Go feature, that way your Pokemon can automatically knock out five or six Pokemon at a time. And because shiny Pokemon can't be knocked out using the Let's Go feature, this would have made shiny hunting small Pokemon like Charcadet and Mousehold a whole lot easier. So that's pretty much it. Six improvements that I think could have realistically been added to the Till Mask to make it a whole lot better. All in all, I think the Till Mask was a much better part one than the Isle of Armor was in Generation 8, but it still has room for improvement. If you want to watch my full review of the Till Mask, you can do that right here. And if you're interested in what missed opportunities I think Scarlet and Violet had, I think I posted that like two weeks after it came out. You can do that right here. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.